Airplanes are considered to be one of the safest methods of transportation available. Believe it or not, according to statistics, planes are safer than every other form of transportation. It's safer than cars, boats, trains, and buses. It's actually reported that more people die from car accidents each year than plane crashes. This promise of safety has made the masses feel safe to travel on planes. Millions of people fly around the world each day confidently knowing that these planes are so safe. But what if they weren't so safe? What if those manufacturing these planes were lying about how safe their planes really were? And they have been making sure the masses don't learn the truth about their planes through intimidation and violence. Hey guys, I hope all is well. Thank you for joining me for this Patreon exclusive. In today's episode, we will be talking about the Boeing whistleblower. Let's get right into it. Millions of people fly on planes every single day, and I'm pretty sure most of you watching this video have been on a plane. I myself have been on planes, and I remember feeling unsafe each time, but my mother kept reminding me just how safe planes are. I'm pretty sure some of you have felt uneasy on a plane and have wondered just how safe these planes really are. If we listen to those who make planes, they promise that planes are the safest transportation available. The thing is, recently, Two men who work for one of the biggest airplane manufacturers in the world, Boeing, has come out to expose their planes for not being as safe as they claim to be. For those who don't know what Boeing even is, they are a plane manufacturing company. Boeing has more than 10,000 commercial jetliners in service, which is almost half of the world's fleet, and more than 5,700 airplanes are currently in order. Chances are you have traveled or will be traveling on a Boeing plane, which are supposed to be one of the safest commercial passenger planes out. On January 5, 2024, a door plug on an Alaska Airlines flight 1282 Boeing 737 blew off shortly after takeoff from Portland International Airport. The plug is a cover that seals an unused emergency exit. The incident occurred at an altitude of around 16,000 feet and caused the cabin to decompress violently with a loud boom and a gale that ripped headrests from their seats. No one was seriously injured, and the aircraft managed to land safely, thank God. Several big developments impacting the Boeing 737 MAX 9 air aircraft. This after a mid-air emergency forced an Alaska Airlines flight to land just minutes after taking off. Let's go to NBC's Priscilla Thompson, who's joining us now from Houston. Priscilla, tell us what happened. Yeah, Alex, well, we are just learning that the FAA is ordering certain Boeing 737 MAX 9s to be grounded if they are operating in the U.S. We learned a short while earlier that United was also planning to do that. And it comes as those NTSB and FAA investigators are on the ground in Portland, Oregon, trying to figure out what went wrong with this Alaska Airlines flight overnight. You see the video there of that massive hole. It appears that an entire panel on the side of the plane was ripped ripped off in mid-air. We've seen video of the oxygen mask being deployed throughout uh, the cabin and that wind just rushing in through that opening as passengers were sitting on that plane. And our affiliate there spoke with some passengers after they got off the plane about what those moments were like. And I want to play a bit of what one of those passengers had to say. It showed you how structurally strong those planes are. You could blow a hole like that because the hole was about as wide as a refrigerator and about two-thirds as high when I finally got to see it later. This incident spawned the question of how safe are these planes really, as that situation could have ended much, much worse for all of those on the plane. Most people would just brush this situation off as just an isolated incident. The thing is, according to a former employee who worked for Boeing for over 30 years, these planes aren't as safe as they claim, and this could happen to many more planes. Holy crap! Holy s**t! A man by the name of John Barnett, who was a former quality control manager for Boeing, raised several concerns about their planes. John in 2019 told the BBC that under pressure, workers had been deliberately fitting substandard parts into aircraft on the production line, meaning that they were using faulty or parts that weren't up to the safety standards. He also said that he had uncovered serious problem with oxygen systems, which could mean one in four breathing masks would not work in an emergency, which meant those oxygen masks that were supposed to keep the passengers breathing during an emergency situation will end up failing on one fourth of the passengers on the plane. John also said that soon after working in South Carolina, he had become concerned that the push to get new aircraft built meant that the assembly process was rushed and safety was compromised. 
He later also stated that the workers had failed to follow procedures intended to track components through the factory, allowing defective components to go missing, meaning that these defective parts could end up on a plane being used by a commercial airline. John also said in some cases substandard parts had been removed from scrap bins and fitted into planes that were being built to prevent delays on the production line. He also claimed that tests on emergency oxygen systems due to being fitted to the 7A7 showed a failure rate of 25%, meaning that one-fourth could fail to deploy in a real-life emergency. John raised some serious concerns about these planes and made some damning allegations about Boeing. According to John, Boeing was cutting corners with these planes in an attempt to meet production demands. While cutting corners might not matter in other situations, when you're building planes that millions of people are going to use to travel in, corners should definitely not be cut. If anything goes wrong with a commercial plane, it could mean the of hundreds of people per plane. Boeing would obviously deny these allegations and claim that John was lying and making things up for no reason. But John wasn't shutting up and decided to do the right thing and keep pushing this issue. He will end up agreeing to give evidence in a whistleblower lawsuit that is being filed against Boeing. It was believed that the evidence John was prepared to give was going to be devastating for the company. Unfortunately, this wouldn't end well at all for John as he paid for his honorable decision with his life. On March 9th, 2024, just days after he agreed to start giving evidence against Boeing, he quote-unquote committed suicide by hitting himself in the head. The week before he gave a formal deposition in which he was questioned by Boeing's lawyer, before being cross-examined by his own counsel, he had been due to undergo further questioning on Saturday. When he did not appear, inquiries were made at his hotel, and this is when he was found dead in his truck in the hotel parking lot. All of this follows that mid-flight incident and that door plug on a Boeing 737 flew off. And now a former Boeing employee turned whistleblower has been found. Yeah, that employee actually had a retaliation lawsuit that was set to go to trial in just a few months. Tom Costello brings us the latest now. Police in Charleston, South Carolina tell NBC News they are aware that a former Boeing employee turned whistleblower. I know that he did not commit suicide. There's no way. First tonight, our investigative reporter Ann Emerson has new information in the death of Boeing whistleblower John Barnett. A close family friend of Barnett says he predicted he might wind up dead, that a story could surface that he himself, but he told her, don't believe it. And Tessa, Barnett's family friend Jennifer said they had talked about this exact scenario playing out, but his words seemed like a premonition. He told her, don't ever believe it. We all know John didn't. Himself. I'm pretty sure everyone knows John and why he was killed. What he had to say was going to destroy the biggest airline manufacturing company in the world. What's truly sickening is that Boeing actually chose to give a statement about John's death, stating, We are saddened by Mr. Barnett's passing, and our thoughts are with his family and friends. This is truly disturbing how this company will make this statement, knowing what they did to that man. This is how the elite in our world handle those that know too much of their secrets and expose them. I pray John is resting in peace, and that God granted him eternal life for his sacrifice. He spreading the truth, a very important truth that can save millions of lives, and I commend them for it. Coincidentally, John quote-unquote himself the day he was supposed to testify with information that could destroy Boeing. We can't make this up. This is what our world is coming to. Boeing thought that they got rid of their problem. This wasn't the case, as not long after John a new whistleblower stepped up to pick up where he left off. Joshua Dean was a former quality control auditor for Boeing. Just like John, he came out and raised concerns about the company's safety. Dean, who had been at Boeing since 2019 as a quality auditor, raised concerns about improperly drilled bulkhead holes on parts of Boeing's 373 MAX planes. He claimed that flagging the issues with his management had no effect. He was eventually fired after they found out he made complaints about this. Now, less than two months after John died, Joshua was following in John's footsteps, ready to participate in the investigation by revealing what he saw. Just like John, this didn't end well for Joshua. Joshua, who was a healthy man by all accounts, ended up getting severely ill out of nowhere and would end up checking into the hospital. Days later, he was in very critical condition and had tested positive for influenza B, MRSA, and pneumonia. He shortly died from his illnesses. Former Boeing employee who went public with safety concerns over the 737 MAX has died. It happened just weeks after another Boeing whistleblower committed. 
45 year old Joshua Dean Tuesday morning from a severe infection. He had worked as a quality auditor at Spirit Aerosystems, a company that builds parts for Boeing. His attorneys say he was in good health until about two weeks ago, then he was admitted to the hospital with the flu, pneumonia, and MRSA. In 2022, Dean raised concerns about manufacturing safety on some Boeing 737 MAX airplanes. He was fired last year and later filed a complaint with the FAA. His death comes just a few months after Boeing whistleblower John Barnett. The two were represented by the same attorneys. The hospital had stated that they had never seen anything like it. His family was left pointing the finger at Boeing as they knew they had done to Joshua what they did to John. Both whistleblowers right after agreeing to testify against Boeing. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see what's taking place in this situation. Boeing is openly any whistleblower that decides to talk out. Knowing that these massive companies are controlled by Masonic elites, I'm not at all surprised. This is the Masonic elite's MO since the beginning. While it might look like the authorities are investigating Boeing, that's not the case. The government knows how much money and power those at Boeing have. They know they're capable of whistleblowers. If they're truly trying to take Boeing down, they would have provided protection for these men, but they didn't. The government is going to protect the elite and their money. The government makes billions off fees and taxes and a bunch of other charges off every flight flown by Boeing planes. Why would they work against bringing this company down if it won't profit them? They don't care if people's lives are at risk. They already allow all the food manufacturers to feed people poison. The government, just like Boeing, wants to keep all of this a secret. Something I pointed out in one of my videos covering the Drake and Kendrick beef was that this beef was being used as a distraction for this whistleblower situation. Most people don't even know that the biggest airplane manufacturers is making faulty planes and anyone who tries to expose them. The reason for this is because they're distracted with this massive Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef. Drake and Kendrick are two of the biggest rappers who are both signed with Universal Music Group. UMG just so happens to be primarily owned by BlackRock and Vanguard. Between those two companies, they own the majority of the stock for UMG. Now, it just so happens that both of these companies own billions worth of Boeing stocks as well. Between both of them, they own 11% of the entire company, putting them on the board. Even more interesting, Lucian Grange, the man who was exposed for being at Diddy's freak-off parties, was being denied his $120 million bonus due to the bad press he was getting. But after the Drake and Kendrick distraction, I mean beef, his $120 million bonus was approved by all the board members who just so happened to be BlackRock and Vanguard. This Drake and Kendrick beef was initiated now for three reasons. To save hip-hop, to get people off Lucien Grange's back, and to be used as a massive distraction. BlackRock and Vanguard own most of UMG. That means that they control the boss over at UMG, which is Lucien Grange, the man who controls both Drake and Kendrick Lamar. It all ties together because these are all the same elite. All that's going on in the world and people are arguing about two puppets who sold their souls to manipulate the masses. That was their plan all along. They don't want people hearing about this Boeing situation and panicking and stop flying on their planes. They know that if this story gets too big, it will forever affect the aviation industries. What we are seeing is a greedy company ran by Masonic elites silencing those who speak out. Boeing needs to be held accountable for their crimes. Their planes need to be recalled and things need to change immediately. So many people's lives are at risk just so that these evil elite won't lose any money. I feel it's important for everyone to know this information, so make sure you spread it. People need to know the truth about the planes they trust so much. No one deserves to be deceived about their safety. Well, I'm end this one here, but before you guys go, I just wanted to politely ask you guys to like, comment, and share this video so that it'll be recommended to others. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.